Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 24th, 2022, and this is the week and charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. I appreciate, appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. So, what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, your questions on trading, your favorite stock, and crypto picks. For crypto, just put a dollar sign in front of it and hold off on the stock picks if you don't mind so we get to the live charts, and that's for your benefit. To make sure I'm I see everything, and he doesn't act accidentally get deleted with the questions. And today, what's we're gonna so what we're gonna focus on? Easy for me to say. Well, I had some thoughts on our trend following system and trend following systems in general, and with a free system included. <laughs> and crypto is rising from the dead, or might be at least. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Could one of you guys put a post out on Facebook? I forgot to do that tonight. And that's from my buddy Greg Morris. All right, let's talk about some characteristics of a trend following system. And at the last minute, I was thinking maybe I should have the word good in here. Okay. Well, it must be conceptually correct and it must trade with. The trend, conceptually correct, as I've said a thousand times, I borrow that term from Larry Connors every now and then when I was doing a little programming and research and stuff like that and some consulting, I'd come up with a system by accident sometimes, fat finger something or whatever, and it would work, but conceptually we couldn't really prove why it actually worked. And Larry said, well, we, you know, those type of systems we just would toss out, see if there's anything to glean, but more often than not, if there's nothing logical, we just toss them out. One thing you must have, obviously, is clearly defined ish, uh, entries. Now, we're talking mechanical systems, and I am a discretionary trader, but I do pay attention to certain mechanical systems, and you got to realize that I cut my teeth developing trading systems many, many, many years ago, 20-something years ago. I'm afraid to use the word 30, but I think we're getting close to 30. <laughs> which is kind of scary. Anyway, with mechanical systems, you definitely have to have a defined entry. Now, again, I'm a discretionary trader, and I'm going to tell you how I use some of this stuff in a few minutes and how it might be actually useful, especially right now in certain markets, but we'll get to that. Anyway, I'm just going to show you, I'll give you all the rules of the system in just one minute, but basically we're looking for two bars of, of Landry light, meaning lows are greater than the EMA. In this case, we use a 30 EMA, and then we enter above that two bar high. That's pretty much it. See, I said I was going to tell you in a few minutes, and I'll tell you in less than a minute. There you go. So the buy is here, okay? So that's a good example of a simple system. It must capture all major trends. So following up on this chart, this is Bitcoin. You can see after that nice little buy signal, it chopped around for a while, and then it took off after the buy signal. So when I said chopped around, I mean, Back here, I'm just looking at this and I always notice things once I start the webinar, obviously. But back here, you can see it chopped around for about a month or so, and then it finally took off. Now, of course, this is the mother of all examples. I am long this one. This is AXC, Axia. And last week, if you happen to be here or watch the recording on YouTube, you notice I said that this has a kind of a Bertie Madoff manipulation look to it. And that's how Bernie Madoff got caught is because this little head fund, hedge fund, as, as I say often, like the little Price is Right man, the little, little mountaineer, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> that's what this one looks like. I finally got around to taking partial profits on it. I didn't want to. It just kept going up. I'm like, I'll take profits eventually. But I'm like, nope, nope. Finally, I made myself today just because, I don't know, it looks a little suspicious to me. Uh, the markets don't work this way. If you've been trading for more than a day, you probably will agree with me. Now, it must avoid as much whipsaw as possible. And occasionally I'm blown away, and I really couldn't find a perfect example for you this week. But even though you will have a lot of, of negative signals or, or signals that just flat out don't work out, to my amazement, a lot of times this silly little system, which I'm going to beat the dead horse on in just a, minute, a few minutes, can keep you out of a lot of trouble until the market eventually trends. If the market gets super, super choppy, sometimes something as simple as Landry Light and the moving average can really 
keep you out of trouble and have you sit on your hands for a long, long time. You can see this market finally did begin to sell off here. And I cut off the name. I forget which this, this is. I think I'm long. I think it's ADA. ADA. It's either ADA or ALGO. And we're going to go to live charts in a few minutes. And I'm long both of those. And I'll show you those in just a second. Haven't done a whole lot in crypto other than short them and started covering recently. And now I'm looking to go long. Much rather go long than short anything. But, you know, me, I'm a trader. I do what's... What the market tells me to do is a trend following moron, card carrying trend following moron. Oh, just realized something. I should have grabbed a prop, but oh, I'll do it for next week. <laughs> anyway, so you can see it finally it finally did give you a sell signal. Now, if you exited at the moving average, you would have gotten out here and then back out here, back in here. And this signal didn't work quite as well. But one thing I would emphasize, as I will in a few minutes, is not to follow something purely mechanical, especially when it comes to the money management, because let's say you've got in here and you had a really, really big profit way down here. Well, of course you wanna take partial profits on something like that. And then I'm gonna talk a lot about that in a few minutes too. So in addition to avoiding as much whipsaw as possible, you must have clearly defined exits or better yet, some sort of money management plan attached as I just alluded to maybe take some partial profits along the way, and then maybe use a trailing stop like I do when I'm trading stocks and, well, pretty much any other market too. Let it widen out with time. And again, we'll get to that in one second. Now, it must be simple and easy to follow. And the more complex the system is, the harder it's going to be to follow. And believe it or not, a lot of trend following systems begin to look alike after a while. I probably shouldn't play down my stuff as much as I do, but I think that you could probably come up with something very similar as long as it fits the, as long as it's conceptually correct and trend following, a lot of systems are going to look alike. Now, I think where my edge, so to speak, comes in, make a little air quotes, with stocks is the stock picking. And I was thinking about that tonight. It's like I could show you pretty much all my patterns and everything I do in a few hours. But when it comes to how do I pick the best stocks to trade, that took 14 hours of about eight hours of instruction and then and then another six to eight hours, I forget how much exactly, I think it was around 14 total of follow-up and webinars going through the whole thing. But in general, the concepts are pretty simple. And especially when you look at that little system like this. Now, here's a system I alluded to a minute ago. And I'm dating myself here. This was published in 1996. You can find this graphic on the internet by Googling 2 2 slash 20 EMA breakout system. Lately, I've been using the 30 day EMA. You can use your favorite EMA. So we're looking for two bars of Landry light, which just means the two two lows are greater than the moving average for the buy. Bar one, bar two, and this is I discussed this in the stock chart show in case this looks familiar. And then this originally was designed for the Japanese yen, and what I what I had set out to do was prove that a simple system could work. And I was pretty excited when stocks and commodities picked it up in 1995, and I think it got published in 1996. And it actually launched my career. I, I ended up with one guy that was trying to start a hedge fund who put me in touch with another guy who was running a hedge fund who, and somebody else read the article and they liked it and they told me to get in touch with Larry Connors. And then the whole sort of, career ball got rolling from that so to speak anyway now i've got 10 ticks this was for japanese yen way back in the day even if you were doing forex today i think i would uh if you um, even if you were still trading forex and using something similar to this i think maybe a little bit more than 10 ticks but the point is enter above the two bar high and for shorts two highs below the in this case 30 ema or i'm using now 30 this is a 20 here and then enter below the two bar low of those two bars. Give it a little bit of wiggle room. As you play around with this, you'll see the more wiggle room you give it, the more whipsaw you will avoid. 
but the higher you get in for longs and the lower you get in for shorts. And unfortunately, if you've been trading for more than a day, you know occasionally, especially when using something like a whipsaw filter like that, you end up buying the high tech or shorting the low tech. It happens. I guess I don't have to worry about monetization. Shit happens. <laughs> we'll be talking about shit coins in a minute. That's what a why though, but anyway. All right, so let's take a look at some 230 EMA breakouts. Here's ZEC, bar one, bar two, in or above the two bar high. So your entry would have been right here, okay? I'm just looking at this. I'm just noticing this live. It's so funny. I can look at charts all day long, but when I'm looking at them live, I see so much more. Right here, bar one, bar two, buy here, no trigger, okay? Bar one, bar two, buy here, no trigger. On the short side, you may have triggered in bar one, bar two with a little money management. You may have gotten out. Yeah, that's a pretty big move. You should have been able to get partial profits at least. And then right here, bar one, bar two with some wiggle room, you may have avoided this buy here, okay? And I don't know for a fact, but maybe, just maybe. And if you didn't, the thing is, you're only risking back down to the EMA. If it doesn't stretch too far away from the EMA, would it get started? When, the, when it triggers, I should say, that your risk aren't that huge. I'm long this one. This is either ADA or Algorand. I don't know which one, Algo. But bar one, bar two again. And this actually is in the wrong place. This line here should be up here. So here's a case where it did kind of stretch away from the moving average first, okay? So in this particular case, the entry again would be up here. My apologies for the mistake. And you are stretched a little bit from the EMA if that's what you're using, okay? But you could obviously use a little distraction and say, okay, well, I'm looking for a breakout because this is a breakout type of system. So maybe I'll just put it a, a stop below this low and get stopped out. I could always get back in above this high, okay? Especially in the market that trades 24 hours a day. So that arrow is wrong there. This is the Algorand. This was the one I was probably thinking about when I drew those lines, bar one, bar two, and your entry is here. Again, I am I am long Algorand. Uh, yeah, George, small position adjusted for risk. Good point, great point. George is saying, okay, if you're stretched away from that moving average and you're following the system mechanically, which, which is not a bad idea. I know George is a little newer to trading and I know he's exploring a lot. And, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea to, to Take a little system like this, and I, and I saw one of your posts earlier where you said you were just um, you, you were trading at a hundred dollars a clip uh, risk, and, and nothing wrong with that, absolutely. Like you said, quoting me, you said get your reps in, absolutely. So you know maybe you could use something like this in crypto, okay? Uh, go way back here, bar one, no trigger, no, I mean no signal, bar one, bar two, you probably would have triggered in, depending on the wiggle room. Let's say you triggered in here. Well, your risk is only down to here. So you get stopped out, okay? Your first trade's a losing trade, so what? Bar one, bar two, short below this level here, okay? Of course, it immediately goes against you, but then what happens? Look at this thing, it absolutely implodes and loses roughly half of its value. So that would have been a pretty damn good trade if you are following the system mechanically. Okay, so I thought it would be kind of fun, and I know you want to party with me, if I showed you some of these things that are live, and I have a, a mystery chart coming up, and I'll give you a little hint, the mystery chart tonight is in the Landry list, so you guys should be able to figure out which one that is, if not, I will tell you, you guys that are on the service that is, but anyway, nice little bottoming type of action, and when we get to the live charts, and I want to talk a little bit about this in a little more detail in a few minutes, but I'm wondering if there is some Phoenix characteristics to this this 230 EMA. And, and again, I don't I don't trade mechanically, but I think there are times where a mechanical system, especially in an inefficient market like crypto, especially when you're getting these these nice nice bottoms being carved out, might be worthwhile. Now I'd be willing to bet if you put in bow ties and use some of the transitional patterns that I like those things will probably also be setting up and triggering. Now, one thing cool when you're using ACP, and it's, it's also built in the meta stock, by the way, my plugin is my plugin is free. I'd be curious 
if I'd actually make money selling it. I, I'm so used to giving it. I give everything away and I make it. It's like the old internet model of running my business. I give everything away and I try to make it up, make it up in volume. But anyway, the uh, the plugin is free with ACP Stock Charts Advanced uh, Charting pa Platform. It's also free and Metasign. It's a free add-on. But you can see again two bars of Landry Light. Look down here, one, two. Now we're in the third bar, okay? And then enter above the high. In prior weeks, I talked a lot about Landry Light, okay? Another possible system would be, okay, we want 10 bars of Landry Light to establish a trend. If we don't have that, it's not in a trend, okay? And after 10 bars, maybe we look to get long or get short. Short side might be a few less less bars. Yeah, George, small hit. And that's a thing with trend following. And that's one thing I've been toying with a lot, especially on an intraday basis, is go in... It, 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 this market has been kind of super choppy in between some fantastic trends. And on a lot of the intraday stuff I'm doing in some of the ETFs, such as LabD, LabU, Gush, JNUG, JDUS, Drip, those guys, I've been taking signals and using a super tight stop. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And eventually I catch a trend. And today, I, I kind of spun my wheels all day, but I caught a trend in, in SoxL, and that was pretty much it. But I kind of went and it took a lot of stabs at everything else. And I'm still debating over or still debating with myself on whether or not it's it's all worth it. So the intraday stuff in general, because it takes its toll on you, and the taking a bunch of little small stabs. But I tell you, at the end of the day, if you don't have if you have 10 huge losses, it's pretty stressful. If you have eight or nine or ten small losses in one big gain and if it nets out a little bit in your favor your day is not quite as stressful all right let's continue on okay you probably think it's signed me up <laughs> well settle down beavis somebody once pointed out if you're beavis what does that make me <laughs> A longer term trend following system, and as I was going live tonight, it's like, is this really a longer term trend following system? Sort of, sort of, because it, it, it can capture some amazing trends like it did in that AX, Axia, whatever it is, AXC, I think it was. But when I first came up with this, I didn't really consider it a longer term system. I considered it more of a, a swing trade system that occasionally had some really good long term trends. But if you're looking at a pure longer term trend following system, you're going to have horrible accuracy. And it was funny, no matter what system I tested back in the day trend following, and this is how I learned that after a while, all systems sort of begin to look to like within their certain genre. I don't know if that's the right word, but all breakout systems are going to look a lot alike. All longer term trend following systems are going to look a lot alike. And Longer term trend following systems are going to be right, I think 20, I always forget the numbers, but I want to say it's about 27% of the time. So you're going to be wrong a lot more than you're right, but occasionally you hit it out of the park. Now, the other thing that happens is you have some abysmal drawdowns, and it's two types of drawdowns. One is to open profits, and one is when you're getting chopped up quite a bit. And as I've said, ad nauseum, Richard, Richard Dennis with the turtles seem to be okay with the drawdowns to open profits because it came with the territories. And I think I heard, uh, listened to an interview once with one of the turtles and it said, yeah, it would kill them because they wanted to take profits, take profits, take profits. And they had to follow the system and, and watch this these huge profits erode sometimes. But but as you know, especially when you're, once we shift gears and, and we're in ARLP, we've been in that for about a year and a half, I think, maybe two years. And that started at, at uh, below five bucks a share, I think. And then now it's in the mid teens. And hopefully, I know you said hope, but hopefully it'll get back to multi year highs and maybe all time highs. But if you look at the portfolio, especially because it's such a big winner, it's up over 200% from where we got in. And we got in at low levels. So we bought a whole bunch of shares because that's what the risk called for, right? So now when that thing goes down like a half a point or whatever, it really takes, it really puts a whacking on the portfolio. So if you had a portfolio of just the longer term trend following stuff, the open drawdowns, which comes with the territory, it's kind of like, was it Mike Moody once when I said, uh, 
you know, Mike, have you ever saw for streakiness and drawdowns and things like that with this momentum stuff? He was talking about momentum once. He's like, Dave, if you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a lot of baby poop. <laughs> Babies are cool. They're neat, you know, but you're going to have a lot of baby poop. So that's one of the problems with the trend trading, especially the longer term trend trading. And the drawdowns are really abysmal. Now, I would never be Schadenfreude, or as my German friend calls it, Schadenfreude. <laughs> I meant to practice that before, but it, it sounds much more mean. Uh, it, it, Schadenfreude, Schadenfreude. Anyway, Schadenfreude, to those of you who don't know, means taking pleasure in someone else's pain. Somebody stumps your toe, stumps their toe, and you laugh at them, or et cetera. And, and sometimes, you know, maybe I'm guilty of these types of behavior. But when it comes to markets, because we're all in this together and we're all, nobody's getting out completely unscathed, right? But again, not to be shot on Friday, but like, where are the turtles now? Okay. I think they happen to be in the right place at the right time. And they, they did have the right guidance. And, it, and, you know, all the stores sort of align with these guys. And uh, where are they now? Well, <laughs> I know, I know one's in prison. <laughs> I uh, I know some things that I shouldn't say uh, about some others. So I'm just gonna, before I get myself in trouble, you know, <laughs> watch watch it get whacked tomorrow. Man, you're so smart, huh? <laughs> so why bother with all? Well, it's worth the bother. The only way to make real money in a market is through capturing longer term trends and and you know i thought i'd go webinar without saying it but maybe not tonight cpe was one of our bigger recent in more recent memories uh, winners and it it ran 500 percent before it stopped out i think at one point it was up 600 percent. and again there's that drawdown thing we just talked about to open profits and we got one as i just said in the portfolio up 200 percent let's hope i don't know i shouldn't use the word hope let's hope it keeps on keeping on okay well, back back in the day, it was a coal stock. Well, it still is a coal stock. Back in the day, it's like, oh, well, it looks like it's going up. I'm going to buy it. And like, hey, what do they do? Oh, it's a coal stock. Ah, coal stock? Coal stocks? I don't know if I want any coal stocks. And then, lo and behold, the stars aligned or whatever, and coal stocks are still in vogue. Now, the other thing is you have to start somewhere. Like, George is trying to wrap his head around the markets, and he's a big sponge with all this stuff. George is in the Facebook group with this. And, you know, this might be a good little system for you to look at and experiment with and, and, and play around with. And you have to start somewhere. So start somewhere really simple. I would encourage you to maybe start with something simple and mechanical like this, or it doesn't have to be this, okay? I'm not selling this system, so it's free. But start with something super, super, super simple. Follow mechanically, like I said earlier, based on George's post which reminded me, get the reps in and then move move up from there and do it with small size. And believe me, you're going to make a lot of mistakes in this business. And I still make a lot of mistakes. But you're going to make your biggest mistakes when you're just starting out. And like I preached in prior weeks, another one of those, okay? If I keep making the same mistake, I fat figure an order today. Why? I didn't announce the order. I didn't read it out loud, okay? I didn't read it out loud like, <laughs> like someone recently describing what's going on overseas. You know, it's like Russia is a big country. Ukraine is a smaller country, you know? So <laughs> I am going to buy, that's buy 1,000 shares to cover. And I need to just start doing that again. I made the mistake of, of not doing it recently and it kind of bit me in the butt. Anyway, luckily today it was no big deal. Was able to fix it really quick. So anyway, where was I going with that? Well, another one of those comes from Daily. I've been talking a lot about that. Ray Dalio, Ray Dalio, in his book Principles, and it's like if you make a mistake, write it down and point out that hey, I made this mistake. And if you make that mistake again, write it down. It's like oh, that's another one of those. And eventually, I think you'll begin to recognize that either your Einstein's definition of insanity or you're going to avoid that because you don't want to make that same mistake again. There's plenty of new mistakes to make, believe me. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to work on a system where 
I will, I'm going to document those, another one of those much better. And I'm going to work on my trading journal with this. And I, just, I don't have the technology in place yet. And I'm hoping that I'll get it within the next few weeks. And I'm going to work on it for a couple of weeks after that. And then I'm going to share it with you guys. And I'm hoping that it works out as I think it might. It has a lot of potential. Now, a system is better than no system. So this is one that I am long. It's either eight or algo. Again, I'm getting confused. You would have avoided the long side for a long, 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 long time, for months and months and months and months and months. These crypto pairs have been going down, as I've been saying. No, I was in the 30-day EMA is your best friend, okay? Landry Light is your best friend. Look at all the red down here, right? Highs, less than the moving average. So you've got how many days? 70. Wow. Look at that. 70. I feel like tiny elbows. Look at that trend. It's huge. You got 70 something days of downside Landry light. This means that this, this pair has not seen the upside light, okay, the light of day in 70 something days. Wow. That's what, three months? Three months and change? And then now, what's it doing? Well, we got a little bit of upside Landry light, and now we have a buy signal. So a system is better than no system. And again, I'm not trying to sell you in the system. I would I would play around with this. I play around with a lot of other stuff, okay? I would, if you're trading stocks, I would stick with the core methodology, although I'm going to show you one in a few minutes that is set up right now that I think might be worth taking. But uh, I'm not going to give you the symbol. That's a little teaser there. But I will take it, and you'll see how I do or not do with it. Now, one thing you might want to do is, again, don't rush out and trade it mechanically, but you might want to use something like this to help you find some developing trends, okay? This, Landry lights, bow ties, and stuff like and things of that nature to help you find some developing trends. And right now, as I'm gonna to get to in a second, I think that the crypto bull market, or let's let me rewind it, the bear market may be coming to an end. Doesn't mean we're in a bull market. Now, here's the thing. You'll print money with something simple like this in trending markets, which often come from inefficient markets. Now, inefficiency is one of my favorite topics. I know you wanna party with me. And I've spent entire webinars just talking about it. And whenever I meet a trader or old or new, you know, somebody that I've known forever, like uh, Emilio Tomasini one time began talking about inefficiency. My ears perked up and I got pretty excited about that. That's what a real money is, is when, when that $5 stock goes to $15 or whatever the case was, again, with that CPE, 5 to 50, you know, something crazy like that. That's where the real money is. And that's where you make a lot of money. And that's even if that's an efficient stock, meaning that it's big and stodgy and everything's kind of priced in. Well, occasionally it can make an inefficient move. And, and those oil companies got beat up, 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 and just went down forever. And then they started going up. And then all of a sudden the, the narrative kind of fit the stock, okay? And they've been going up for a long, long time. Uh, inefficient markets, everything's not priced in, okay? And crypto is a can be a wonderful place for that. And, Basically, there's been nothing to do in crypto for a while other than short it, right? Looks like it was going to go away, and now it's coming back a little bit. And I think it's going to come back a little, a little bit differently this time. And that always, that always happens. You get some sort of market shakeout, some sort of bear market, separates the wheat from the chaff, and then a new bull market emerges. Now, you need to use a healthy dose of money and position management with all of this stuff. And some of the things we sort of alluded to a minute ago. George says, do you feel that higher volatility that costs, do you feel that during higher volatilities, that higher volatility that certain systems perform better? Well, it, it depends on the system. And let's just talk about a system, whether it's discretionary or mechanical or whatever. And as I've said quite a bit, I have a, a client who's been with me as long as, as I've been doing this pretty much for the most part, at least publicly. And every now and then he'll start doing a lot of scalping and he'll absolutely print money if the volatility is high in the overall market. But then 
the volatility drops off, as I've showed in many webinars before, and then he starts losing money. Well, he, he has a little bit of that, but it was working so well syndrome. I know, I'm guilty. I've done that, in, I've done that in, in every single market that I've ever traded in my entire life, but it was working so well. That's, that's a curse that we traders have. And it, there's a neurology involved in that. It took me 30 years to realize that, hey, you know, the reason it was working so well and you want to keep doing that is because you're chasing that high, that habit. So in that particular case, volatility drops off. His system, okay, is no longer working because his system was depending on, upon these volatile moves. Now, the question is, no, when to stop? No, I don't, you know, it all depends on what the system, it all depends on what your system thrives on, okay? What it feeds upon, okay? And if your system feeds upon an increase in volatility, then as volatility gets higher, it can actually work in your favor, but provided that that volatility comes with direction. Now, here's a case in point, okay? The the chart, I'm gonna show you in a second, the volatility dried up in this instrument, okay, for a long, long time. The, the Phoenix stocks or Phoenix crypto that I just showed you, the volatility dries up. And if that volatility begins to expand in the direction of the trend, that's when you absolutely print money. Now, if the volatility gets kind of whack and you're just going into it, okay, I hear what you're saying. Maybe you need to say, well, let's look at how wide that bar is. Let's look at where my stop needs to be. And that's what we do every night in a service. The one that I that I have as an honorable mention tonight is just so damn volatile that your stop would have to be 10 points on a $20 stock. And I just don't think it's worth going after with such extreme volatility. So I'm not sure if I'm answering your question directly or if I need to rephrase, but in an ideal world, as long as you're long something and in, in the volatility goes with the trend, then that's where you're gonna make your most amount of money. If you're long options and volatility goes through the roof, you hit a payday, right? Provided you get a little direction with that. Now, again, along the lines with money management, Possibly a hybrid approach, such as taking partial profits, half and trailing a gradually widening stop as the trend progresses in order to stay with the long, long, stay with the trend for a long, long time. The key is to survive the inevitable chop and catch the occasional outlier. As I have preached ad nauseum, somebody will get in a service. A few months later, they'll quit. Well, you know, I thought we did pretty good last few months. Not that we always do well, right? But I'll say, okay, well, why are you quit? Well, I, I couldn't make any money. Okay, well, did you catch that CPE that went up 600% and stopped that at 5%? No, I didn't take that one. Okay, well, did you buy that ARLP that's up 200% now? No, I didn't take that one. But I took them other stinkers you recommended. I was like, well, that's why it's not working. Because you have to be be willing to grind it out, grind it out, grind it out, and then eventually you're going to knock it out the park with trend following. As I learned with from Larry Connors many, 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 many years ago, momentum can be streaky. And, and as I've said a thousand times, I was speaking to a, a group in, in Dallas once, and Peter Monty was my host, and I actually stayed with him at his house. And after the seminar if you know peter he, he kind of likes to give you a little constructive criticism which I, i'm willing to take he's slightly older than me so I, i'm willing to learn from anyone older or younger a little fortune cookie the other night says we learn from everyone we meet so anyway he said uh i wouldn't use the word streaky you make it sound too elusive and i'm like i don't know i don't know of a better word to describe the fact that it's streaky okay but yeah that's the secret is catching that occasional outlier now, just FYI, as I said a thousand times before, I would bet on the person who has a bad time and has some losses, but doesn't give up, comes in, and let's say the market's choppy, comes in, gets chopped up, chopped up, chopped up, chopped up, finally catches the trend, and then gets chopped up, chopped up, chopped up, chopped up, and his equity curve kind of looks like this. You know, and he finally gets his head above the water, and then, he starts making money, losing money, making money, losing money, making money, losing money. Then he starts getting that upward sawtooth. I would bet on him rather than the person that comes in, 
and hits conditions just right. And I've seen her on the short side too. I saw a guy absolutely print money. He was using a lot of my stocks in the Landry list. He was using my official recommendations. This was in 2008, late 2007, early 2008. I hope I have those years right. I think that's right. Where I remember, I think it was October of 2007. I couldn't find a long to save my life, as I say every webinar, almost every webinar. And he was shorting those things with both fists. And he made a, a shit ton of money. And I was telling him, dude, pay off your condo, pay off your car, pay off all your debt, okay? And go back to, a, I don't know, 100K in your account or whatever, and, and do it again. And it's like, he just was trying to, he was trying to make that million dollars, $10 million or whatever it was. And unfortunately, I haven't heard from him, so I don't know how he's doing, but I kind of fear for the worst. Usually when somebody disappears off the map, it's never good. And I've seen, like I said before, a thousand times, I had a, I had a couple come in, husband and wife team, profitable profitable business, very profitable business. They could have easily brought somebody in to help them with the business, phase that out into where they're still making money from that business and keep on trading. But they were making so much damn money trading because they came in like, and I forget, I get my stories mixed up with my people, but these these people I think came in in 1999. And we all know what happened after that. They were absolutely printing money, okay? And it's like, dude, or, and do that. Keep your business, and you could you could do both because they were in a business where you you weren't, you didn't have to be, you didn't have to be uh, away from the screen all day long without giving anything away or rubbing salt in their wounds. I doubt they're still watching. But anyway, getting back to the Simple trading system. This is pretty much my entire core methodology in a nutshell that I use in stocks and some other markets. It's just a pullback, right? For the most part, TKO is a pullback. Um, bow tie is sort of a pullback. It's still kind of pullback in nature. It's an early pullback, early in the trade. And so your risk obviously is your entry minus your stop. Okay, so let's say that's one X. Well, we transfer that up, okay? Entry by the stop plus the entry equals your initial profit target, obviously. And that is, hopefully we get that swing trade out. At this point, our stop is at break even. And then we let that stop widen out, okay? And we go from one X to hopefully many, 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 many X. And again, that's where the real money is. And then we let that, stop widen out to a few x okay how many x well it depends on how long the trend goes and we use a couple techniques to do that number one gaining ground is what i call it let's say a stock rallies two points we might only bump our stop up one point or one point and a half let's say it rallies let me make the math a little easier let's say it rallies up three points we might only bump the stop two points so each day we have those big rallies we're bumping that stop up but not by the same amount. Now, eventually, when that stop gets really, really wide, we'll go back to one on one. So, if it goes up, we'll go up one on one with the stop. So, you could end up with a much bigger risk than X, okay? But you've made so much up here, you could survive that drawdown, okay? And one of these days, it's going to come down and eventually stop you out. And you need to say so long, thanks for all the fish. And Sometimes clients bitch, Dave, I, we gave up a lot of money on that, you know? It's like, okay, well, by my math calculations, and I know your account is pretty damn big, yeah, but let's just say you only had 100 grand, based on 100 grand, you made $20,000 on that trade. Yeah, you could have made 25 or a little bit more, but you made a lot of money on that trade. So, you know, I'm sorry I stressed you out. Send me a check. <laughs> and as long as I've been doing this, I've never gotten a check. But I keep trying. All right, here's our mystery chart. This is straight from Landry List. And when I was doing my stock analysis tonight, kind of had that EMA, 230 EMA in the back of my head. And I came across this one. And you can see, simple, stupid little system, right? No bueno. This thing was no bueno for a long, long time. And now, is it bueno? I don't know. It looks kind of like a Phoenix strategy in nature. I'd be willing to bet it's a bow tie too. 
bar one, okay, bar two, above the 30 EMA, two days of land your light. So the entry is going to be above that two bar high. And I'm going to take this trade tomorrow for shits and giggles and see what happens. If it's a bow tie too, I'll say, okay, well, it's a bow tie. So there's no argument about whether I'm trading a new system out of the blue or whatever. New system that's 30 years old, <laughs> 20 years old. Anyway, speaking of simple systems, the TFM 10% system is no longer a sell. Does that mean it's a buy? No. Okay, here's your sell here. There's your calendar sell where I have circled the low below the 10% line, okay, the buy line, and close below the 30, I'm sorry, the 50 week moving average. So that's a sell. It actually, probably where this arrow is, it actually triggered on an intra week basis, which I consider a legitimate sell signal. But the testing that I did was on a weekly basis, just for what it's worth. Now you can see we are now back above the moving average and back above the buy line. Now that doesn't mean that you want to rush out and buy the market, but if you didn't sell on the signal, you may have dodged a bullet. But it's pretty common for this system and any other trend following system, as you probably saw earlier, to have a little throwback, so to speak before the real move comes along. So if you didn't sell, maybe you could sit tight and see what happens. And maybe this market will go straight back up. That would be fantastic. I'm pretty amazed at what it's done so far. But as Linda Rasky once said, market will do what it has to do to cause the most amount of pain and the most amount of people. And the corollary, it'll often do the obvious and unobvious manner. So it still kind of looks like it's rolling over, but it's gonna have a big rally first and make everyone believe, okay, that it is a okay. Dave, you've been a while. Uh, Dave is asking, uh, can you dive in a bit on what you mean by volatility and direction of the trend? Okay, I did presentations back in the late 90s on volatility with structure, okay? And what I was doing back then was I was looking at higher HV, higher historic, historical volatility markets using a 50-day HV, but I was also looking for stocks that traded cleanly and had structure to them, okay? A big cup and handle type of bottom, a bow tie, or even a TKO or something like that if something began to trend. And a lot of cases, you would get an expansion of volatility in the direction of the trend. In fact, it was it was a beautiful thing, and of course, you know, hindsight's 2020, and by the time I discovered all these things, that it all ended, you know, but it was working so well. <laughs> In fact, if, uh, if I would have kept on about another six months, you probably wouldn't be seeing my fat ass right now, right? Uh, so anyway, long story endless, what I was doing then and what I what I showed when I, back would, seems like back then, it, the webinars really didn't exist that much, right? It was all in person. And what I would show in person is I would show my patterns and show big picture patterns like cup and handles and stuff, on more volatile stocks, and the options were were mispriced because the market had never seen that crazy volatility. So you would get in, and then you would get that expansion of volatility. Now I know you like to program and and, and noodle with things a lot, David. So uh, David's a client of mine. I've been knowing him forever. We've crossed paths and and done some research with some of the same people over the years. And anyway. What you might look for, is one thing I used to do years ago, I had something I called sleeping tigers. And I made the mistake of sharing it with somebody and, and they thought they came up with it, but that's a that's a three drink story, three drink minimum story on that. But So I never really wanted to go public with that uh, so much. But anyway, if you're looking for, it, it's, it kind of dovetails in with some of the Connors work about the volatility, find something with high volatility, let's say over 50 days, and then the compression at volatility, shorter term. And then if you combine a little trend with that, then you can get a volatility in the direction of the trend, expansion in the direction of the trend. And the most beautiful thing that really works really well there, one good example would be, let's say you had something that was kind of lower, high volatility, longer term, lower volatility, shorter term. And then you have like a knockout move, you got a false move, okay? False expansion 
and then you take the opposite of, of that, okay? And that's something that um, I was supposed to publish with Connors many, many years ago called Volatility Expansion Method, VEM, where you look for the short-term volatility to compress and then expand again, but you took the opposite side of the trade. So does that help? Does that give you a little uh, fodder for research there? Bringing back a lot of old memories tonight, David. <laughs> back in the day, you know, I really hadn't had a whole lot to say about crypto, but crypto is warming up again, so that's pretty cool. So, excuse me. So I finally updated my slide. When I present a show to stock charts, <coughs> excuse me, I give them what I think should be the uh, title, and I give them a little synopsis. And a lot of times, to my surprise, they change the title. And most of the time, or many times, I should say, it's for the better. And uh, I, I guess they look at what would make most sense, given their audience, et cetera. And they changed it from, I already forgotten what I called last presentation. I did it two days ago. It's a long time ago, especially in these markets. Anyway, they changed it to something like uh, crypto rising from the dead. That'll be posted tomorrow on my website. So it got me thinking like, yeah, well, I guess it is rising from the dead in some cases. And it's rising from the dead after one hell of a bear market. So think in terms of the Phoenix strategy, like that stock I just showed you a few minutes ago, something that goes down forever, then bottoms out forever. And what happens is all that supply gets taken out of the market. People unfortunately die, their estates get sold, there's tax law selling, there's all kinds of selling that happens and eventually all that supply, people who bought the stock and had, let's say the decades IPO, people who bought it and had a lockup, they finally get to get out. And there's all kinds of reasons why somebody might sell. As I said before, divorce, um, what else? <laughs> lots, of, lots of reasons. Anyway, so with the crypto, crypto's kind of like got rid of, seems like it's gotten rid of all that supply a lot of it, and now it's kind of beginning to rise from the ashes. Ashes. Now, early on, I talked about Ethereum and Bitcoin, specifically Bitcoin, but Ethereum could be uh, a good bellwether too. And if those guys are above the 30 EMA, the health of the market is, I'm not gonna say great, but is improving at least, okay? especially Bitcoin again. Now, what's interesting is they sure are pumping Ethereum, by the way. And I've been, I find it really interesting. I don't know what's going on. And I know that the cert, the um, the algorithms are watching me and they're watching what I'm clicking on, right? Um, <laughs> maybe too much, you know? <laughs> get a lot of summer, summer hike in my feed lately. Why is that? But I do get a lot of Ethereum lately and it's it's really showing up and it seems like they're really, really, really pumping it. Now you listen to Michael Saylor and is that his name, Michael Saylor? What's his first name, Saylor? I think it's Michael Saylor. Anyway, his last name, Saylor, S-A-Y-L-O-R from MicroStrategy. And he'll get you pretty pumped up on Bitcoin and he's not so much an enthusiast for Ethereum and he gives lots of other, lots and lots of reasons. I think it's okay to have a little bit of both. And I'm actually breaking some of my rules by hodling a little bit of that. Don't tell anybody though, okay? Now, is it too soon for RS trading? I dipped a toe in the water this week and uh, maybe a little last week, let me see, and started doing a little relative strength trading, but relative strength trading means just buying the strongest ones. And that works when they're all really, really, really going straight up, kind of like 1999, right? In stocks, you could just buy the strongest stock of the day or, or five or 10 of the strongest stocks of the day and then stick with them and then keep rolling those into more and more uh, hot stocks as they as they begin to drop in their relative strength. That's all I'm doing is buying the strongest pairs. So I am starting to do a little bit of that. I'm wondering if it might be a little too soon. I've kind of gotten burned a little bit here and there. And the other thing I was thinking of today was, Dave, all you need is one. And so you hit it out the park on one or two, then all that getting chewed up in the process makes it worthwhile. And we'll, I'll do a walkthrough on some of this. Uh, I have to say the 30 EMA remains your best friend in crypto. 
if you didn't know a damn thing about crypto, but you wanted to trade and you didn't care what they what the pairs do or claim to do, which you shouldn't, <laughs> then the 30 EMA remains your best friend. Don't buy any crypto that is below the 30 EMA, and that's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. Okay, before we jump into crypto, I know everybody here is in Facebook, except we have one person here that does not like Facebook, and I understand that, and I suggested to join with your dog's name, put your little dog photo up there. I, had, I think it was from South Park years ago. I think South Park once said, uh, I haven't seen it in years, what's a once I got married, the marriage package that I bought came with a two-year-old, and I was no longer allowed to watch South, South Fork. Uh, but uh, they had uh, one episode where, I think it was George Clooney or something, wanted to wanted to be in an episode, and they have a policy where they don't let the uh, the actors actually talk, you know? So he was turkey number five. So he made the turkey noises of turkey number five. So that gave me the brilliant idea of uh, putting my dog on Facebook and I haven't done it in a while, but I used to. It was, and, and everybody got a kick out of it and aggravated people too, which 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 I loved. Because <laughs> I can't get on there and get political or post memes and all that other kind of stuff because of this business that I found myself in. But I could, my little dog would just, I would just say rough, would answer everything with rough, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Anyway, I digress. But the, the Facebook group is pretty cool. We interact with each other. Uh, I get a lot of good ideas from you guys, so thank you for that. You can ask for help. We can noodle with things, go back and forth. If you don't mind, if I see you doing something you shouldn't be doing, I might beat you up a little bit, a little tough love here and there. Every day I'll throw out signs and signals, things that I'm seeing, such as an ogre trade. I threw an ogre trade this week, worked out really well. Turns out it wasn't really an ogre, but it worked. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> so. Anyway, let's shift gears and go into crypto for a second. And if you guys want to talk about some crypto pairs, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to pull them up. And then if you want to start putting your stocks in, just put a dollar sign in front of the crypto because it gets real confusing. All right. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, who's that, John? I didn't know you were doing crypto, John. We got a lot of Johns in the group just on paper. Cool. Yeah, that's it. That's Great way to get started. I bet you're making a lot of money. <laughs> so, I just got alert on GRT. I wonder if I'm long. So we'll see. We'll take a look at that. Okay. So GRT, I had alert in here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, GRT. Yeah, look. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you're it's probably a bow tie. Okay. That looks pretty good. I wonder if I should buy some of that. Yeah, I think it looks great. That's the problem with, when I'm doing these um, webinars. It seems like everything looks great, you know? I get all pumped up. I'm all jazzed. Let's get a window over here and take a look at that. Okay, so GRT I like. And GRT, you notice, is in blue. Oh, I forget that this is not going to work. Okay, this should work. So let me just start sort by the flagged, and I'll show you what I'm in. So what do you think in blue is something that I'm thinking about or was thinking about at some point in time? So GRT just happened to be one of those. And you can see with these, notice that they've been in a downtrend forever, and now they're beginning to rise from the ashes. So take a look at one inch, okay? That one looks kind of interesting. Arr, the pirate coin, isn't that kind of stupid? But hey, who cares? It might be a little bit thin, but bar one, bar two, any up in or above this high, trigger would have been here on that. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, bar one, bar two, technically triggered here, a little wiggle room would have triggered here. So you'd be long with the 220, or in this case, the 3, 230 EMA. It's easy for me to say. So let's take a look at a few more of these. That one's trying to carve out a bottom. This one's kind of going straight up. Dash. Ethereum's looking pretty good. Now they're making a big deal about Ethereum because Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin right now. Okay. We'll see what happens longer term. I think Bitcoin is so well established, and, and maybe I've been listening to 
a little bit too much uh, Michael Saylor, okay. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. Okay, let's see what else is happening. Here's a GRT that I like, okay. Like I said, probably a bow tie. It's bottoming out in here. It looks like it's getting ready to take off. So let me see if we can, I don't know if I'll do it. Let's see, crypto. I guess I'll just wait till after the webinar. So as you go through these, especially ones I have in blue, you can see that they have been improving as of late. Keep an eye again on that 30 day EMA. It could keep you out of a lot of trouble. Don't buy anything unless it's above the 30, okay? Look at this, bar one, bar two, enter above the high, this is sheep. Nope, came right back in. Okay, let's see, bar one, bar two, enter below the low. Didn't work, right? Went straight back up. Okay, bar one, bar two, you might've gotten baked out on this one. You may have pulled a little bit out of the money market, but now it's beginning to improve again. So again, it's kind of amazing how much whipsaw you can avoid with something like a silly little system like that. I've been short this one forever. It looks like I might have to think about covering it. And I have a little bit of YFI if I haven't covered it yet. I've been short that one forever too. I've been long this one forever. That's the Bernie Madoff of uh, <laughs> shit coins. I have no idea why it just goes up. I'm long this one, it's failing miserably, so I might need to take some action. I'm long this one too, Ada, we talked about that one earlier. And I'm long Algo. Algo, you can see kind of breaking out from that 230 and notice that it's been bottoming out for a long, long time. Now, I hate to say I hope, but I'm hoping that the I'm hoping that the crypto goes back to being very, 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 very inefficient, and then we get that volatility expansion in the direction of the trend. I'm also along this one. You can see it's not quite a 230 EMA, but it looks like it was it was kind of coming out of this pullback. So I got long. Uh, no problem. David wants to know what's the exit rule. Well, the mechanical system is exit at the 30 EMA. So if you were short this one here, okay, let's say you got short here, bar one, bar two, short here, and then you wrote it all the way down. Obviously, geez, you know, it went from what is that, a buck and change down to 50 cents or 60 cents. You would have you would think you would take some partial profits and maybe travel stop slightly tighter. Than the EMA, but the EMA is your exit point if you're following it mechanically. I know you're firing up TradeStation or what are you programming in now, David? Easy language still or something else? I'm also along this one, okay? Bar one, bar two, enter above the high. Amy Broker, okay. It's been a while since I programmed anything. So as you go through these, you can see that that many have been failing miserable for a long, long time, or miserably, but maybe just maybe they're beginning to bottom out, okay? And then to keep an eye again on that 30 EMA. Obviously not, a time, not enough time to go through all of them tonight. So let me just show you the RS just for S and Gs. Let's go by the strongest. So up here, if we sort by the strongest, now see this one's already tailed off, so I wouldn't rush out and buy that. Fracto Ethereum, I don't know what that is. NFT, okay. So these are strong, and the market just um, rolled over one day, so this is not gonna be as relevant. You'd actually have to look at it going back in time. But anyway, anyway, go through these at your leisure. My whole point is that Again, not to be that horse, but the 30 day EMA is your best friend. What do you do with this one? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Why? It's below the 30, okay? So if you're a kid or if you have a kid wants straight crypto, just say, here's a rule. Here's a thousand bucks. Go out and have some fun trading crypto, but don't let me catch you buying anything that's below the 30 EMA or I'll drain your account. That's a good idea. In fact, that's a great idea. I, I met a trader once. He, he had a system that was very volatile. He couldn't trade it himself. It made him too crazy. Well, he's pretty crazy to begin with. But anyway, I'm going to get myself in trouble on that one too. Another two-drink minimum. So 
what he did was he hired somebody and said, I need you to follow the system. And if you don't follow it, you're going to get fired. And I'll be willing to bet that guy followed the system. All right, let's shift gears and go to stocks. I think you kind of get the idea. Okay, NGL, you, what do we do with this one? Nothing. It's below 30 EMA, okay? It's that simple. I know. It's crazy, huh? Now, obviously, there's a little bit more to it than that, but boy, that's a good start, right? Keep you out of a lot of trouble. Okay. Track. You want to look at track? Sure. I think I like track. Oh, see, I, I don't have it with a dollar. It's only against Ethereum. Let's go against Bitcoin. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. I, I, I did, Do you know a broker that you could trade it against a dollar? But sure, that looks fantastic. Okay. But those no, those fractions are so small because it's against um, it's against BTC. But yeah, see if you can find that against a uh, dollar. It's in Coinbase against a dollar. Cool. All right. Well, let's add it. Let's let's uh, for S and Gs. Let's take a look at all of these. All sources. T R A C U S D. Perfect. Coinbase. Look at that. All right. Let's check it out. Yeah, it looks the same, obviously. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, is it thick enough to trade? I don't know. I'd have to see uh, um, the spreads and where the uh, where the money is. So, by the way, you look at that spread, it's looking like this, and you want to get in like at the market, which is here. If you see a lot of uh, a lot of people willing to sell it to you in, in, at a certain price and a lot of volume at a certain you know volume by um, by price, you know, if it's like $50, $20, $30, you know, you try to get a few thousand dollars off, make sure there's there's some depth to the market when you're doing that. Thank you. I didn't realize that was a Coinbase. I'll make sure I get it done. Uh, I'll take it up. It began its downtrend when I set everything up. Yeah, you know, that's as Murphy would have it, huh, John? But that's probably good, John. So John said he got his uh, crypto stuff up and running. He's all excited. Watching Dave Landry have all that fun in crypto. <laughs> And then, of course, it takes, you know, and remember what I said? I said, I feel like I'm the Judas goat. And I had that businessman with the goat head, you know, going to lead you guys to slaughter with the crypto. But, hey, I preach money management quite often, right? So just make sure you use money management when you do that stuff. All right, let's shift gears. It's getting, it's getting very interesting again. Absolutely. All right, let's shift gears. Let's go to, let me get this uh, changed. Let's go to stocks. And uh, you can tell I'm kind of jazzed tonight. All right, uh, start uh, giving your stock picks for tonight, and I'll start looking at those. Take a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ back above the 30 EMA, okay, turned up. The EMA turned up because why? Price crossed above it, okay? Simple moving average doesn't do that, at least not that quickly. Like if we added to 50, for instance, let's see where the 50 is just for S&Gs. 50 is right there. Notice that the 50 or Duffity, as we call it, is headed lower still, right? Now, that's not always a bad thing. That lag is not always a bad thing. I actually use a simple moving average, as you know, and the TFM 10% system because I want a little lag in the system, okay? But you can see it's still headed lower, and it's going to keep heading lower for a while because you're dropping off higher prices and adding in lower ones, okay? The EMA is front weighted. I, for, I don't know. I forget the math because I don't need to use the math, but it's like uh, 80 something percent of the EMA, or something like ridiculous like that, is the is the last price bar. You can see here the 50 is dropping still, but the 30 is headed up nicely. I'd say the P's are overbought at this juncture. Okay, but they're going up. It is what it is. Although I did get an alert a minute ago. It looks like I just got stopped out the futures overnight, but that's another thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, two divided by n plus one, two divided by open parentheses n plus one, where n is the length of the EMA. Yeah, okay, I got you. So that's the math right there for anybody who uh, anybody who's uh, wants to play with math. <laughs> two divided by open parentheses n plus one, close parentheses. Okay, 
So 30 u may be a two divided by 31. It's that simple. Wow, that's pretty cool. So divide um, two divided by m plus one where length is length of m EMA. Is that for the is that for the last price? It, it doesn't matter. We we've got charted. Okay, for the last price. Thank you, David. Yeah, I mean I'm a nerd. I like to know these things, but I'm sure everybody else is like eyes are glazed over. <laughs> Dave, my eyes glazed over a long time ago. Anyway, I don't think we're out of the woods just yet. And the S and P 500 again. I think it's going to rally just enough to make everybody think it's fine, and that's fine. We'll we'll just see. We'll take it one day at a time, right? I mean, if you don't walk away with anything tonight, one day at a time, okay? But you can see uh, Russell 2000 kind of bottoming out in here, looking a little better. By the way, okay, so what's happened with the Russell? Okay, day one, day two. So technically, it would have been a buy with the 230 EMA. Depends on how much wiggle room you give it. I'd give it a lot of wiggle room. But you don't really want to rush out and trade a mechanical system in an efficient market like an index, okay? And I learned that very early on. I couldn't I couldn't make trend following systems work in the S&P futures. And I'm like, well, damn, the futures look like they go up forever, at least back in the 90s, right? But they chop around a lot in the meantime, and you get chewed up, okay? Like I've been saying, uh, not that long ago, okay, we're down, we're up, we're down, we're up, we're up, we're down, we're down, we're up. It's just Jackie Mason market, right? Energies, uh, lose a little steam today, but boy, they've been on a tear as of late. Even more impressive, Bevels of Mining, bam, winning all-time highs there. Some other areas have improved quite a bit, like insurance, but there's no structure in this chart for me. It's kind of all over the place, okay? But you can see it's been improving as of late. Drugs have been improving. As of late, as you can see, I wouldn't rush out and buy drugs. They're all over the place, wide loose, but improving nonetheless. A lot of areas still in downtrends like software, still looking pretty ugly in here. Went up to kiss the 50, simple moving average. Who's one of you guys was really into the 50 for a while? And you trade it off of it. You you wait for like Landry Light or a trend, whatever you're using, and then you wait for a kiss of the moving average and then short. So based on that. That would be a sell signal. I like the EMA, 30 EMA for something like that. You know, pull back the EMA, short. Look at that. Okay, look at that trade. It's huge. Semiconductors, pretty good day today. This is where I made all of my money. I'm not bragging because I lost a lot of money too. I'm not sure how that future shook out, so I was kind of flattish today. It's been a hard week to make money, at least on the intraday stuff, what I've found so far. I don't know if you guys agree or not, but today was an okay day, at least for semis. But you can see chop, 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 chop. So far, it looks like they're still headed lower. I wouldn't get too excited just yet, but again, one day at a time. Utilities, bam, look at that. All-time highs. There's no stocks I'm seeing here just yet, but maybe we'll see something. I'm not a big fan of utilities, but who knows? Maybe the volatility has increased enough in them to make them worth trading. Had my best day trading in a week. Had my de best day trading week in a long time. Good for you, Jeff. Yeah, we'll have to compare notes and some of that. Remind me in uh, Facebook. Bonds remain in a pretty serious downtrend and bouncing a little bit as of late. Bonds down, what's that mean? Rates up, okay? And then the dollar. Been a little worried about the dollar. I mean, I know I'm confusing the issue with facts. 80% of the supply printed in the last two years. Holy crap, okay? That's scary, isn't it? Am I just the only one? You know, we're gonna end up with uh, where's my trading dollar note? Is it over here? I got lots of money in my office, <laughs> most of it's worthless. I think I got 10 grand in around. Where'd that go? Oh, here it is. To remind me how much money I lose sometimes, peel off a few hundreds. $100 trillion, okay? So printing money, you fiat economists, works until they don't. <laughs> you can't even, uh, it, it, I've, I've got a, a picture in the article I did on um, on Bitcoin. And uh, it was a picture of, um, and I got it, I got the idea from Ian McActivy. He's looking down on us, laughing at us probably. And uh, the South African bathrooms, they have a um, signs that say, uh, hey, you can't wipe your butt with, uh, with with these notes and throw them down the toilet. 
because they clog up these notes. I don't, I'm not sure you'd want to, though. It doesn't feel that good. They clog up the toilets. Is it up more? Is it UUP more of the dollar versus other currencies than value? Ah, good point. Ah, very good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a basket of currencies that the dollar is being compared to. So the dollar is the dog with least fleas. So yeah, I'm not saying that that gas is at five dollars a gallon. And uh, my favorite, I, I might actually, I might actually. In fact, the other day we actually ended up going to Sam's, which we usually don't. And I actually bought some cheaper whipped cream. My, the whipped cream I like on my coffee is Klein Peters whipped cream, and it's like eight fifty right now for a little eight ounces of that stuff, or however much you get. It's but it's beautiful. <laughs> You pour it out, glug, 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 glug. <laughs> got like a big hunk of, I don't know, you got like butter on top from the cream that has risen to the top. <sighs> That's what that means. All right, uh, any stocks, any individual stocks? Going once, going twice. I know we talk about stocks all day in Facebook, but uh, maybe somebody who's not in Facebook. Well, while we're in pass, obviously I want to thank everybody for turning up tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered? Bring it up at Facebook, or obviously, if you're not on Facebook, Dave at DaveLander.com or DaveLander.com slash contact, and you'll get some goodies if you do that. All right, everybody have a great night, and may the trend be with you. Thank you, guys and girls.